Welcome to our Missionary Stories. We thank the Lord that we're able to give these out to you. Every person that's listening will receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. What a thrill it is. And those of you that know that we give a New Testament out to every person that will serve the Lord, you need to give these out in this city. They have gone to so many prisons. There are many, many people faithful and as we show this, it teaches us that we can know Jesus Christ as Savior. And you can also write for the post office box number and get these free. It says, Dear friend, I want to ask you one of the most important questions you will ever answer. Are you 100% sure that you will go to heaven when you die? You can be sure. Jesus Christ is mankind's only, only hope for eternal life. This is what you need to do. If you're not doing anything for the Lord, all you have to do is give these to your neighbors. Every child in every school needs one. And we pray for 100 fold of every person that gets one. So we've already given out over 40,000. We have just ordered 10 more thousand, which is going to be 50,000 New Testaments that's been given out. And there have been many servants of the Lord that has had part in this. And they're all free. Nothing that I do costs any money because I live by faith. I do this for the glory of God and not for money. And every person that's listening, God put me here for such a time as this, as with Esther, as with Todd and Lisa. Wherever you are, God has put you here for such a time as this, that Satan would not rule in your lives. Satan is our enemy. Satan hates everything that God loves. He has an abode, his already, everything that has happened in this life, he wants to be worshiped as God. But his final abode is already determined by God. That is the lake of fire that God made for the devil and his angels and not for people. So you can rejoice today that you know the Lord Jesus Christ. You can rejoice today that you know that you are going to receive this gift today. And then God's word teaches us. Now, hating another person, we've already seen what that's like. Only Satan hates. Only Satan lies. He's a liar. He's a murderer from the beginning. And every murder is from Satan. So we don't want to follow someone that hates us with cruel hatred. So we're going to find out what God's Word says in 1 John 4, verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. First of all, he is in us. That's why our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. He's dwelling within us, His divine nature, the Holy Spirit. And you cannot know Jesus Christ apart from being born again by the Spirit of God. It's divine conception. And then in verse, this is 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. You must know that Bible verse. God is love. He loves you with an everlasting love. No matter how much you sin, 
he still loves you. But when you reject him, then you go to an eternal hell. That's the only way. And it's not a sin that's, that is going to send you there. It's rejecting his love. So whatever sin is today, confess that. And he will cleanse you from all sin. And, and we know that, we'll read verse 16 again. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. You can't love your husband. You can't love your children. You can't love anyone unless you have his perfect love. And God in him. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. We're the light around us. But if there's sin and darkness, God doesn't even hear our prayers. There is no fear in love. See, fear comes from Satan also. And perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. Because every person that dies without Christ goes to a place of torment. That's Satan's abode. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I've got some wonderful lessons that I'm working on about worrying. These are tremendous to show you that we must never worry. We must trust in Jesus Christ. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth, loveth God, love his brother also. Love. I pray that we'll have love one for another that he commands us to have. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy perfect love. We thank thee for thy mercy and thy grace. Thy grace is sufficient for every need. We thank thee today that we can call thee Father because thou hast sent thy Son to die on the cross that all of our sins were laid on him. And he has hid them as far as the east is from the west. So far hath he hid our transgressions from us. So we thank thee today for every person that's listening that every person can understand we have a ministry and we are just servants of God to reach this lost world today. In Christ's name I pray, amen. The supreme need in this world today is salvation. The supreme need in this world is salvation. So after Lisa knew what had happened, she didn't even know what flight he was on, so she called her friend, Elaine, and Elaine first called her, and then she called back to Elaine, and her husband answered, and he said, I'm trying to find out the information about Todd's flight that he's on. I'm sending Elaine right over. So she said to Elaine when she got there, she said, oh, how terrible. To think of all the innocent people, over 2,000 people, dying in New York and in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon, and we were not able to do anything about it. She realized that what was happening, that she had a real burden for the lost. Have you got that burden for the lost? So then, after she knew without a shadow of a doubt that possibly this was the flight that Todd was on, that the main concern was for other people because she knew Todd's salvation. She knew where Todd was going. This is what we are to do. 
If anything should happen to me right now, my family would not have any worry whatsoever because they would know that I have lived the abundant life, that I am in the presence of the Lord, absent from the body and present with the Lord, and that they will be with me someday if they accept the same gift of eternal life that I have. Every family in this United States, as we're praying for revival, a divine revival for this nation, to get on our knees and pray for one another. You see, service, Christ calls service what we are to Him. You see, people get out and serve the Lord and thinking that their works are going to save them. Well, here's what God's Word says about works. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, Ephesians 2.10. You see, it's not, when we think that we're doing things to please God, He knows our hearts. Is it just for show? What is it for? Is it for the glory of God? That's what He says, all things whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So then, Mrs. Jefferson, after she knew what was happening, she had been on this phone with Todd, and she could not believe that they were still connected because most all the other phones were down. So he said to Mrs. Jefferson, this was the hardest thing for him. He said, Mrs. Jefferson, if I don't make it, will you tell my wife and my sons, I have two sons, and I have an unborn baby due in January. Will you tell them that I love them? Now, there were 2,800 people, and every one of them had the same, same trials that Todd was going through. And she said, I certainly will, Todd. So Todd said to her, he said, will you say the Lord's Prayer with me? He said the Lord's Prayer with her, and it says, this is the Lord's Prayer. This is really not his prayer. This is how he taught us to pray. He said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And now this is the most important one of these. Give us this day our daily bread. But listen what thy wor this word says. And forgive those. Forgive those. Think of us forgiving those that have hurt us. Just like Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, he looked down and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And you know when Stephen was being stoned, he said, O oh Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Forgive us of our debts, our sins, as we forgive our debtors. Think of the power of those words when all of those people on that plane were hearing these truths. And then he said to her, let's say Psalm 23, she could hear all the people on the plain saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You must memorize Psalm 23, but you can't say it, that he is my, sir, my shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want anything if you don't know the Savior of Psalm 22 that died for you that you could have eternal life. Then he always said, let's roll, when he was playing with his children. When they had finished, when he had finished encouraging everybody on that plane. You see, that's what I would do. I would be telling everybody that you don't have to fear anything. We're absent from the body and present with the Lord, and there's no pain in death. 
after he encouraged everyone with those words. Can't you imagine them knowing they were going to die? What was encouraging them? The Word of God. You see, that's what's important today. It's the Word of God that brings souls to Christ. He took a deep breath and he turned away from the phone and as he could hear the others say, he said, let's roll. Then they knew that this was what they must do to save other U.S. landmarks. The flight attendant and the other people that were on the phone, they all laid their phones down and other people knew what was going on. And Jeremy that had been talking to his wife, he said, they're going to do it, let's go. Mrs. Jefferson heard shouting. She heard all of the clutter and the screams and then nothing, complete silence. She couldn't move. She sat there with the phone for 15 minutes. Another worker came and took the phone from her. You see, Lisa now has found out. She has found out that this plane was a plane that Todd was on. So her friend came to her house Elaine and they were watching the TV and they said this was flight 93 from Newark. She knew that it was and she cried. She cried and she screamed. Oh no, she dropped to her knees and she said, Elaine, that's Todd's plane. She ran upstairs and prayed, oh dear God, I need Todd. He's always made everything right. Elaine's husband called to comfort her. Todd's best friend in school where he went to Wheaton called. He couldn't comfort, all he did was cry. Then Lisa remembered Queen Esther. She remembered that Mordecai had such love for these Jews when she went in to the king and changed this decree that could not be changed, but she went in to him and they saved all the Jews that were in the Persian Empire. I want to ask you today, are you reaching out to those that are lost? This is a story that should change our lives completely. Because when we leave the house today, we don't know if we'll be back or not. Just like Todd left his little children that he loved so much. So she knew that she had to be strong. She made up her mind that she was going to be as strong as Todd was on that plane. The next morning, David, three and a half years old, she said Todd, he had never faced a death in a family. So she said, David, there was an accident on daddy's plane and everyone was hurt very badly and died. Now this is a three and a half year old. This is what hatred does to a nation and to people. She said, David, but daddy is going to to be going to heaven. He's not coming back on that plane. And we won't see daddy here anymore. We will see him in heaven. But mommy, he's, he, he's, he's gonna get off that plane. She said, no. She said, but we will be with daddy someday. But right now, he can't come back to this earth again. So she knew that she had to be strong for him and for the child 
that's go that was going to be born in January and the other little boy. So Todd, the reason he called help from the air phone, the GTE's air phone, he wanted instead of talking to her that he had hoped to pass on the vital information to help protect her, his two sons, and the one that was going to be born and this nation. Do you love this nation the way that Todd did? So the people on the flight that he was with, that they knew God, that they knew the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. This is why he called the authorities. They knew that Todd was accepting the consequences and he was trying to make everything good for every person in this nation. He be the one attitude. He always was the one that had the right attitude. His quick thinking and deep faith in the Lord Jesus Christ helped him during the most difficult time of his life. No wonder on September the 20th, 201, President Bush publicly honored Lisa's response to the tragedy. Once again, no wonder President Bush mentioned Todd Beamer, let's roll, in his State of the Union address as a symbol of patriotism, someone that loves their country, willing to fight for them. You know, we are to be like a soldier We're to be, because we have someone that loves us so much that we must obey them. His faith and his motivation and how many people that he has helped by this story that is being told of someone with great courage and faith in the difficult time that probably none of us would have. There were many heroes on that plane. There were many heroes. Every person had something to do with them going into the field instead of into the White House and maybe even the people, the White House staff or whoever was there. So Todd was honored, his actions and those of others on Flight 93. Their life cut short by the terrorist. People that hate us. Maybe that's why we still have a person that was willing to make a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it's not easy to be the one that God can use for his glory. She saw the president with her two little children and she knew that her faith in God as she had learned with her father what it was like to lose a person. Her faith in God has kept her. And I want to ask each of you children out there, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat or the wine which he drank. Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in a place of idolatry. Babylon was a place of idolatry. Our nation is a place of idolatry. But we can be strong in the Lord like Todd and Lisa. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6, 8. Now I'm going to read these verses to you and I pray that this will have an effect upon you as you read them over and over again. 1 John 5. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made 
him a liar. You see, this is truth. This is the divine words. Not God hath made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. Verse 11. This is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his son. Don't doubt your salvation. He that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son of God hath not life. Verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that he may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. First John 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Son of God is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begat him, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now I'm going to sing this little song as we go off the air. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God he that loveth not knoweth not for God is love beloved let us love one another first John 4 7 and 8 first John 4 7 and 8 you need to learn to sing that over and over again and you know as you hear these truths It's amazing what God tells you to do today. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So if I should offer you a million dollars today, every person would write to the post office box number because they would want that million dollars. You can't take anything with you. When you leave the house today, every time you leave the house. Let your children know that you love them. And whatever happens, you are in the presence of God. What joy, what a promise for all of you. Pray for everybody in this city today. Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day, tell the world that Jesus is the way, the Lord is soon returning, there is no time for losing, so be a missionary, God's own emissary, be a missionary too.